And Stephanie, one more question for you, because like I said, you're a you are a space correspondent. You interviewed Jeff Bezos right after he came back from traveling to space. Here's a clip from that interview. For all those millions of Americans who are watching yeah. this, who are saying, this is a joyride, it has nothing to do with me. Yeah. What did you experience that matters to all Americans? Well, listen, we, we have to build a road to space so that our kids and their kids can build the future. We live on this beautiful planet. We saw this. It feels like, you know, this atmosphere is huge and we can disregard it and treat it poorly. When you get up there and you see it, you see how tiny it is and how fragile it is. Uh, Stephanie, talk a bit more about that interview and what you took away from it. Listen, that was sort of this extraordinary moment to speak to someone who had just returned. I spoke to Jeff Bezos at the time. I spoke to his brother, Mark Bezos. I spoke to Mark this week. And, and, and they had this moment where they said, I want to honor the planet. And you hear, about, you hear this from so many people that, you, that we've interviewed who have spent time in space. It's that moment when you look back and you can see planet Earth. People say it changes you forever. It's what Jeff Bezos said then. It's what William Shatner said this week. And that is pretty extraordinary. And when you think about the fact that our kids think and talk a lot less about space exploration than I did when I was a kid, because we don't do it from a government perspective as much as we did. And, and now that you have companies like SpaceX and Blue Origin and Virgin Galactic doing this and working with our, and working with our own government and government projects, it is getting us closer to returning to the moon. And that's pretty exciting. Um, and Leanne, you were nodding your head when Stephanie was, was talking about the idea of if people are angry about what's going on, call your Congress member. Talk a bit about that. Well, the reason I was nodding is because what Steph said and then also what Senator Warren said, the whole point of their multi-trillion dollar infrastructure bills is to restructure the economy so that the middle and lower class people with less money have a chance and the people, the top 1% or the top 0.001% there's an e more equal distribution, and that is part of the goal with the Democrats' agenda. It's not just to provide paid family leave. It's not just to provide pre-universal preschool or free universal preschool, but it's to, ins like, to ensure that people get a bigger share of that pie. And, Eugene, how, how well do you think Except the... Except, oh, go ahead, go ahead it's <laughs> I would just say the problem, though, is... It doesn't have Elizabeth Warren's wealth tax in there. It still has the giant loophole for carried interest for private equity firms. It still has preserved 1031, which is the absurd um, provision that commercial real estate firms have. So the one unfortunate takeaway with the reconciliation bill that you realize is Democrats win and lose, Republicans win and lose, but you know who always wins? Mega, mega rich donors. So, so the new plan does focus on a redistribution of wealth, and it will tax anyone making $400,000 or family making $400,000 or more. But this idea that they're really going to go after corporations and the mega rich, it's a hard pass. They don't. Yeah. Well, mm -hmm. Eugene, talk a little bit about that in the White House's stance here and how effectively President Biden is talking about this. I've I've heard from some sources that they're a little angry that some polls show that Americans, while they back the plans, they don't really know what's in it. Of course, full disclosure, they, it's not clear what's in the right. plan right. because they right. are no still way. negotiating. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> No, that's exactly right. And even when you look at the child tax credit, right, we did a poll, um, political and morning consult, and people weren't giving Joe Biden credit for the child tax credit, despite the fact that was something that he has re really, really worked on and, and championed him and Vice President Kamala Harris. And so I think the way they're seeing this is, and I've talked to many sources about this, how are you guys going to sell this to the American people? And I know this sounds gross and grimy, but it's politics, and you have to tell people what you're doing for them, and you, they have to believe you. And I think that's something that this White House has struggled with. If they're not giving you credit for the child tax credit, if they're not going to, are they going to give you credit for the reconciliation bill? Even if it changes their life, right? This is, if this bill passes, whether it's 3.5 or 1.5 or 1.9 or 2.3, that is more trillions of dollars than has ever been pumped into the U.S. economy in this way, right? And so if they have to have to make sure they sell it to the American people, and they know that, right? These people have been doing government for a very long time. And I think President Biden, though, um, has gone on the road. We saw him doing it more, right? He's been doing it more and more, but he has to continue to do that. Or the American people are going to shrug, take their money, you know what I mean, take that tax cut and, and move on.